Hey everybody, today I'm going to teach you how to create your first simple infographic using InDesign. I always look for a good example and we're going to use this one right here. If you take a look at this infographic, we've got a headline, we've got a photo in the middle, and then we have seven points going around it. I'd like you to take the topic that you just researched and include five to five to ten points about your topic. So we're going to create something like this. All right. First thing we got to do, open up your InDesign. It's the pink box on the bottom ID for InDesign. And once it opens, we're going to create new. And for this one, I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to change my orientation to landscape so that my paper goes the long way. And for this one, it could just be a basic letter size piece of paper. And we're going to make that um, landscape. All right, so you should get something like this. The first thing I'm going to do is put a picture on my page. So this little box right here on the toolbar, the rectangle frame tool looks like a box with an X. This is where you can create a picture box. So I'm going to create something like this. Now, if for whatever reason this toolbar is not here, go to Window, Tools, that's where it lives. Okay, well, we need a picture for my box. Now, I'm going to go to the Internet because I'm going to do mine on grizzly bears, just something random. So I'm going to type in grizzly standing, and I want a nice picture of a bear. Oh, this looks great. Oh, except it's got a watermark, so I'm going to find a different one. So you find the picture that you like. Okay. Now, I don't have a right click on my mouse, but if I hold control, control, click, then I can say save image as. And the best thing to do is put it on the desktop so you can find it. I'm just going to name that bear, and it's going to go out to my desktop. All right, back to InDesign. Now, I've created a box, but I need to select it with this selection tool. You can tell that the points are going around it. Up on the very top, I'm going to go to File, Place. So I'm going to place my picture in the box. I'm going to the desktop, and I see my picture of the bear. So I hit Open. Now, first thing you notice is it doesn't look very good. It doesn't fit. If I hover my mouse right over that circle, well, I can drag it down but it's showing me how much of the picture is not inside that frame. So I have to fix it. I'm going to go to Object, Fitting, and fill the frame proportionally. And there he is. Now I can still, do I have any room at the bottom? Yep, I can still move him up a little bit. I want to see his feet. So it gives you the opportunity to size to whatever you want. If I decided I want this picture a lot bigger, Pay attention to the shape of your photo. You don't want to come out this direction for a photo that's shaped this way. If I want to make it bigger like that, object fitting, fill the frame proportionally. I'm going to just hit Command Z and undo that because I'm, I kind of liked him the size that I had him originally. All right, now we need to make a headline. I'm going to get my text box out and I'm going to draw a small box and I'm going to put a number in it for however number of points that I have. I'm going to say 5. I'm going to hit Command A to select that. So Command A means select all and I just selected it. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change that size to something bigger and I want a different font. So for me I think I'm just going to use Arial Black because it's a heavy font and it's pretty simple. I'm going to take it up to 60 points or all the way to 72. I want it really big. I want a big number. Now, if this is not big enough, I could plug in whatever number I want. Like here's 100 points. 72 points is a one inch font. So this right now is bigger than one inch if it were printed. All right, so here's a big number five. Now I'm gonna get a text box out and I'm gonna create my headline. Five things you never knew about grizzly bears. Okay, now I'm going to make this really, I'm going to change the font. So my fonts are over here. I am going to, uh, scroll 
that up. Make that aerial. <laughs> Excuse me. And let's see. Scroll this up again. I'm going to make that one aerial black, and I'm going to make it a lot bigger. Make this bigger. 12 points is really not big enough for headlines. I'm going to make that 18 points. Make this a little bigger. So you kind of experiment with it until you get about the size that you want. Okay. I'll tell you what. The trick about designing is if you're trying to stack different lines of text, it's better if they're in their own boxes. So I'm going to hit Command X, which is cut. I'm going to just drag out a box over here. Command V, like Victor, is paste. And I'm going to just stretch that out and bring it back over here. I want to stack them together. If I hit this button down here, I can see what it looks like. And it looks like I need to scoot stuff around a little bit. If I am on my black arrow, I can sweep over all of these and move them as one thing. Here's my center point. Five things you never knew about grizzly bears. Okay, here we go. Now, if we look back at our Coke um, infographic, I see these little lines with numbers in them. So I want to make something like that too. To make a circle, you've got to go to your shape tool. So usually it looks like a rectangle on top, but if you hold your mouse here, you'll see the ellipse tool. And if I hold shift while I drag, it keeps it proportional. Otherwise it makes ovals and, and I, I don't like that. So I'm just going to hold shift and drag a little circle. Now here's the trick with InDesign. If you make one thing, you can copy it multiple times. So I'm going to focus on making this one the way I want it, and then I'm going to copy it. I'm going to select it. Whenever you get done with a drawing or writing or something tool, click back on the arrow. To, so we this is selected. I need to fill it with color. Remember, I need to make sure that my fill box is on top. And if I come get my swatches out, I can just add a color. Another way I could do it is just double click on this box and I can select a color in here. I can customize it, whatever color that it's, this would be the new color right there. So I could say, okay, well, I'll have a little green box. All right, now I'm gonna get a text box and I'm gonna put a number in there. I want it to be oh, pretty good size and I'm gonna change the font back to that Arial Black because It'll kind of match the rest of it. I'm just going to drag it down in here. You can use your up, down arrow keys to nudge things, kind of scoot it around. And if that looks like the way you want it, great. I'm going to take this. I'm on the selection tool again. I'm going to sweep over these two things. So my shape and my text box are now both selected. And I'm going to group them together as one thing. Command G will group. Otherwise, you could go to Object Group. I've already done it. That's why it's grayed out. All right. I want to copy this. The easiest way to copy something, you have it selected. I'm going to hold my Option key. Option, drag. I'm just dragging down with the mouse. I'm holding the Option key. I'm going to drag with the mouse again. I'm going to put two more over here. Easy. So all of those are the same size, the same shape. Now, to come in here and double, just double click on it, I can change those numbers, and it's very simple to do. Okay, now, we need to make some lines. Now, again, if I look back at my example, one thing I notice is that my numbers are supposed to be on the edges, so I'll scoot those over. We're going to draw a line with a little heading, a little topic heading, and then you're going to put your fact. You also have your source information down here, and I'd somewhere on the page put your name. All right, let's draw those lines. Here's the line tool right here. I'm going to hold shift because as I drag the line, it'll keep it straight. This is a one point line. If I wanted it thicker, I could make it thicker, but truly, I think I like the thin line. Okay, if I if I've got that and I'm satisfied with it, hold the option, drag, hold the option and drag. Now I can move all of these around. So right now I'm just kind of putting them on the page. Okay, now let's get out a text box and we'll put a heading. So um, 
I'll put down size or the size of the bear. And I'm going to change my font back to just try Arial Black or just regular Arial. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to make that a little bigger. Now, one thing I noticed with this example is that these were all aligned to the inside edges. So I'm going to do the same thing. If I've got my text box selected, I guess I have to be on the T tool to see these. Here it is like left justified, so, or right justified. Anyway, I'm going to scoot that down to sit on the line. If you'd like to color, let's say you want to color this font. Well, you can come on over here to swatches and, and hit that button. Here's another cool thing you can do. If you get this little eyedropper out, I could select this green since it was something I found in the gradient and drag across. Oops. Usually it lets me change the color of it. Well, let me change this. Let me see. Nope. Somehow I'm erasing. Well, usually when you choose an eyedropper color, it loads it loads the color and then you can change it. But this might be something that we're going to do on a on another day. Okay, so let's say I like this well enough. Hold Option, drag. I can put this down so I know I've got the right size. And um, I'll say eating. I'm going to have this all caps. So whatever facts I want to know about grizzly bears, then I could take this text box and come in here and write a cool, cool fact goes here. And, then, and so on and so forth. This I would probably move, scoot it down, just put it someplace else. You can make that, decide how you want that to look. Okay. Sometimes, even when I've been using this a long time, sometimes it's tricky to do it, like grab it. I think you have to grab them on the lines to make it work. Okay, this, I just sweep over it so I can grab all of them and roll it down so that they're more aligned with each other. And see that little green line that goes across? It's telling me that I'm lined up with the other one. So I want to make sure that I'm not grabbing that, um, that headline. Oh, so I can click, if I click on one and I hold shift, I can click on the other. Now I've got both of them. I want to make sure that they're lined up evenly across with the other one. Okay, well that's basically the gist. Down here at the bottom, you would create another text box and you'd put your source information. Okay, grizzlybears.com or wherever you found your information. Somewhere on the page, put your byline. So that's a little text box by your name and stick that. I usually put it up at the top somewhere. Maybe tuck it up in here. And that's, that's it. It's your basic infographic. All right, let's go to file, save as. Now, if your box comes in and it's kind of condensed like this, hit this button. This is telling you right now it's going to save to the desktop. I'm going to call this bear graphic. You can call yours what you like. Um, I'm going to hit this button so I can see more options, whether it's going into documents, downloads. If I scroll here, shared, CL Mac, here's THS, journalism, and then these are your class folders. So you can click on here and add it where you like. And that's it. For me, I'm just going to save it to the desktop. And it's done. Well, it's the basic outline is done. You can, it's enough for you to fill in the rest. Good luck, everybody. I, I look forward to seeing what you make.